Hi everyone, it's Jessica here from Paper Ink Stamp and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video we're going to be looking at issue 256 of Simply Cards and Paper Crafts. So this came through just a couple of days ago, uh, but if you haven't seen my latest video was my new craft room tour, so everything has been moved around and this is the first video I'm creating with kind of my new desk setup. Even though the actual setup of my desk is exactly the same, it's in a different place, um, I've managed to tighten up some bolts on my lights on my cameras and things, so fingers crossed it's going to be a little bit better. Uh, so let's take a look at the um, free gift to begin with. So we'll put that to one side. So this we have um, three different things. So we have a Wild Meadows stamp set. So it says limited edition, but I'm pretty sure all of them are limited edition, uh, really. But this is an eight-piece stamp set. So we've got the flowers in here. I really love this one here. I'm thinking we could create a really cool background with this little stamp. And then we've got a couple of sentiments. Thinking of you, love and best wishes, and happy birthday. Uh, then we have the Wild Meadows uh, two stencils here, uh, so they're quite a decent size, uh, it doesn't say on there, let me just grab a ruler, uh, so these look about 5 by 7 oh so that's 8 inches, uh, so they're 8 inches wide which is pretty cool, uh, by about 5 and 3 quarters ish. Uh, and that one is, yeah, about five and three quarters as well. So, yeah, pretty big uh, stencils. Hopefully you can see it. Um, let's just take these off carefully. Um, so do you feel... Uh, so they're coming up with that tape. So I'm going to have to spend a minute or two getting that off because obviously that is... Uh, going to interfere with the design because obviously it's smack bam right in the middle as well um, so I sort that out off camera but uh, let's just put that down there so you can see and you have a nice edge to this as well which I do quite like I think that's quite nice so that's your first one and this one then is oh, that's just done the exact same thing Ugh. Ugh. Okay, never mind. So let's just take these off there. Let's leave that. So, yeah, and then we've got this one, which is the leaves. So I really love that one uh, there as well. I've got a couple pieces which are still uh, connected, so you can go around and just peel those off. But, yeah, I'll have to take those little bit of sticky uh, pieces off. And then we have uh, some papers and toppers to go with them. Uh, so these... A slightly different sort of style so you've got these ones here which are more kind of artistic -y, I would say then you've got these ones which are um, more uh, basic I don't know basic for want of a better word really uh, you've got some sentiments in there as well so these are yeah they're all single-sided we've got sentiments in here um, I'll be honest I've never thrilled with the papers um, that come with the magazines because they're very very thin that is pretty much, I don't even know what kind of paper that is, um, it feels like an ATGSM and like these, you know, it's really great that they come with sentiments and that but they're just like the font on it is huge, um, I'd rather have more and have them be smaller, I think it's okay if you're making a bigger card but yeah I just think they're a little big for me personally and then so you've got two topper sheets and then let's just lay out the paper. So you've got some background prints, you've got some main prints in here with those florals. So you get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight patterned papers and two topper sheets uh, in here. But yeah, I just I just feel like they're quite thin. Obviously the print on them is, is good, like the, the, the print quality. Um, that's why I try to use the best paper I can when I do my paper pads. Um, because yeah, I just, I don't know, I just think they're a little bit uh, thin. So out of these, I do like the backgrounds. Uh, that's quite a nice paper. Um, that one out of the florals I quite like. That one. Um, that one's okay as well. So I don't know if I'd probably use these two. But yeah, these ones are, um, they're okay, they're all right. So that's what we get included. Let's have a little flick through uh, the magazine. So again, this is issue 256. 
um, I'm not sure what the actual date really is uh, on it. This one's $8.99 to buy. So you can see this one here, got a little aperture at the front. But I do like this stencil where you have that bottom uh, on both uh, sides. You have that nice sort of uh, scalloped um, detail there. Let's have a little look. Oh. Uh, so there you go, Nikki's card. So yeah, I do quite like that one with um, with the rainbow in there as well. Like this one's pretty cool where they're using the, uh, let's just get the stamp back. So using this stamp here, uh, which has got the, the little dots, like the tone dots in it and stamping the other images on top of it. Um, this one here that looks like, what's that, a two-tone greeting? It looks like it's a little bit of... Um, uh, yeah, Heat Embossing Resist by the looks of it uh, for that one. Yeah, but really nice sort of bright cards uh, on that, which is lovely. If you want to subscribe to the magazine, you get the free blending brush bundle still. So that information is on there. else we've got if you want to uh, be in with a chance to win the card maker of the year that's open at the minute I would highly recommend uh, doing that so we've got some mix with the papers here um, so we've got plant markers we've got um, I guess that's just like a a cone maybe but with the flowers it's quite nice a seed packet this watering can and you can download a template for that that's pretty cool a seed packet gift bag we've got just a normal uh, gift box there so yeah lots of inspiration within the uh, magazine itself again a few more here as well more sort of simple ones um sort of like this i quite like but yeah just sort of creating panels um, sort of doing some die cutting, some aperture cutting and things like that. So let's take a look at what comes included in the next issue. So issue 257 goes on sale the 9th of May and this is the ultimate card making kit. 200 and uh, sorry 127 elements in here so you get papers toppers card blanks acetate sequins and more um so it's like you do get a little stamp set let me just have a little closer look so here you go so you get 98 die cut toppers nine patterns papers two postcards uh, acetate anchor sequins twine foam pads five stamps and five uh, card blanks there as well and that's got that nautical ahoy there it's called so it's got that nautical theme to it so again that goes on sale on the 9th of may so that is the magazine so these are the gifts so i don't think i'm necessarily going to use the papers in this video probably um i do i feel like i want to make a nice background with this one here i do really like that little uh little image um yeah i think that could be uh quite fun and then yeah we obviously do have our stencils so stencils are a very useful tool that you can have in your stash okay so we're gonna do um a little bit of the stencil then so i'm gonna use this one just here i've got a piece of watercolor card i could make a five by seven card with this but we'll see what this uh, ends up looking like uh in terms of whether we want to use the whole panel or simply just to cut it uh down so there we go so we've got that and then i've got a spatula and what i've pulled out is some of my nuvo drops so with um stenciling and things like that obviously you need to have your paste and there's tons of pastes out there on the market nuvo obviously do their pastes i don't have a lot of them i think i have like one or two of them but a really great alternative is you can make your own with other stuff but is if you've got nuvo drops you could simply use that and that's what we're going to do in today's video so I think I did this recently for a commission that will be coming out soon um, where yeah I just used the Nuvo drops uh, in this way through a stencil and yeah just used it as an alternative product. Now um, I find that I don't use my new I don't use up a lot of my Nuvo drops because obviously per project you're only doing like 
maybe like I don't know three or five little drops on there so these last for ages so just to kind of help use your products up I think using them in this way is really great so this is sort of the um color palette I've gone with so this is the Nouveau uh vintage drop so these dry with a matte finish so we're going to have a matte background here which I think could look quite nice but I've really gone for more pastel colors um here so I thought that would look quite nice because I started off with these two and I thought that would be really nice and then obviously I just started picking up uh, more and more of these um I don't know whether to not include the green or whether the green might just sort of brighten up a little bit so the colors I've got this is pioneer green uh dusty rose coral blush peppermint candy and purple basil so i was looking at the purples initially um but yeah what i'm gonna do is grab my uh desk pad here just so i don't get anything on my mat i'm gonna take this top layer off because i have used that uh, at some point soon the desk pads are going to be coming on sale in my Etsy shop uh, I just need to uh, go ahead and do the listings for them and then basically I've got a spatula I've got some tissue paper some toilet paper at the minute because uh, my blue roll is actually in the car uh, so I need to get that out and all I'm going to do is obviously none of this is going to go back into the the bottle because you're never going to get it back in there whereas like when you use your paste and things any excess you try putting it back in so I'm not going to use too much of this the stencil doesn't look like it's too deep but yeah we're just gonna aim as best we can for that smooth finish if it's not 100% smooth I'm really not too fussed so what I'm gonna do is kind of just go in like that and yeah maybe I might just sort of start up here and I'm just gonna kind of move that around a little bit so you know just the same as you would when you come in and do some ink blending things like that we're just going to do some sort of areas so for that bit do you think that's quite a lot when you think about it as you know nouveau paste um as nouveau drops sorry because obviously you don't use that much um to do your nouveau drops i'm just going to add a little bit and just a little bit over there because i want to make sure i do fill in all of the gaps We've got all of that covered now. The one thing you definitely want to do is I'm just wiping off my spatula, but with your stencil, you are going to want to wash this off as soon as possible. Otherwise, um, it's all going to kind of get stuck. So if you do see like a little extra on the surface that you want to get rid of, then you can just go over it um, and scrape it off. But yeah, I'm not overly worried about that. Okay, so I'm going to set this to one side for the moment and I'm going to go ahead and just go wash my stencil. So there is our background. I did just try to clean that area up a little bit, but again, we can just cover that up. The same with this one here. Um, but yeah, I really love how that's looking. I do think like with the blue and the green, obviously it does stand out a lot more. The other sort of three colours blended really nicely together. But yeah, I'm really happy with how that looks. So I'm going to keep it on my mat. I'm going to move it to one side just to finish drying and actually what I thought we'd do um, is actually just create a second uh, card so I was planning probably to just do this in a second video but um, as I do have a little bit of time um, between just move those between that drying we can go ahead and um, yeah have a go with ugh, this one here so again it's this little stamp here that I'm interested in oh. 
I mean you can use it with this like half tone circle here so you could kind of do that behind it obviously it's a little bigger um than this one but yeah I think that could look quite nice so I'm going to grab a stamping block and some paper and we're going to create a background using just this tiny little stamp here Okay, so I've got some supplies, so I'm going to try and stick with that same kind of colour combination that we had with these three uh, colours here, because I think they're so pretty together, and yeah, we're going to see where we go, although I'm thinking maybe did I want to add the blue, so what I've got here is Tattered Rose, Victorian Velvet and Milled Lavender, um, and yeah, so I've got this stamp here and I picked this one out so this is a craftoscope uh, this is the retro vibes I'll be honest I've never actually used this however um, I'm gonna do something that maybe people might not be that happy with um, just take that off and this circle here, so I wanted really that circle, but it's all encased within that stamp. But this one here is sort of near enough a perfect fit for the centre of our flower. And I'm going to do a little bit of stamp surgery here. Um, I thought this would make really cool backgrounds, and um, I think it will. I just myself haven't actually used it um although the quality of the stamps seem pretty good on here there we go and i'm actually just gonna cut this out you know because things don't have to stay the way they are when you bought them if you want a sentiment maybe that goes in a line and you want it one end or the other well then just cut it apart if you're stamp you can do what you like with it so i'm going to grab the other piece of that paper let's grab this so i'm going to cut this to let's do it that way so we're going to do three and a half by five and a quarter. So we're gonna just do an A6 card. And then what I'm gonna do is take my Versafine on its black ink. Um, let's just bring back this so I can stamp off the edges. This was just the, the piece that I popped into the bin. And I'm going to start by just stamping as randomly as I can this little one. So doing, um, making your own backgrounds using smaller stamps that come within your uh, stamp set is a really great way of using them. Sometimes you think oh, I don't know what to do with that because they're quite dinky but this is a super easy way of um, yeah, of using them up, creating your own patterned papers. Again, you want to make sure that you stamp off the page here as well. That will give it more of the illusion. Or if you want to, you can obviously just uh, cut your paper to be larger than what you need. And then obviously just uh, trim it down afterwards. So a slightly bigger gap there than I would initially like. But never mind. Again, you can cover things up. Oh, my finger in it. There we go. So let's do. Let's uh, put like that. Of the tail end there. And then we'll have that there. And then maybe we'll just do that little edge there. So that is our background. And then we're going to bring in our little circle. And that's going to, that would actually fit quite almost perfectly. But that's not what I want to do for this project. Um, so what I'm going to do is 
Let's start with our milled lavender and let's just so I might have to do a little bit of repeat stamping just sort of trying to condition my stamp a little bit and then what we're going to do is not line it up perfectly so I'm going to line it up off the side so yeah I'm going to have to do a couple of times with this one and yeah we're just going to off center it I think this looks quite nice as a design when they don't quite match up and again it's you know if you're worried about trying to get it in there perfectly and you can't get it to go I think that's the beauty of it is this just doesn't have to be perfect it's just one of those techniques that can just be what it is you don't have to uh, really look to have everything lined up So I think that's a really lovely background. You know, you could do that with colours like these, which are more muted. Obviously, a lot of brighter colours um, would look lovely as well. You could even come in then with a green and just do a, a little bit of green there for the leaves. Let me grab an alcohol pen. G289 yellow green. Whoops. And just to add a little pop of colour. So I'm not going to colour these in. I'm just going to come up the leaves. So this Versafine is not an alcohol friendly ink. So you don't want to colour with it. But I'm just literally adding a little line here. Just to add a little splash of colour again for those leaves. You could just leave it as it is. But actually I think they're kind of just brightens it up there you go quite nicely i think so just what an easy way to use up a small you know because we're talking that's an inch wide by about an inch and a half uh, tall so you know using those really small stamps that you have in your stash and creating backgrounds with them let's grab a card base and yeah just finish off this really simple little card so for my sentiment and my matting layer, I'm going to come in with tumbled glass. So we're going to just add that blue. We've got a little bit of green in there with the leaves. We're going to come back in with the blue there. Again, I'm just going to take this piece uh, here. So currently we've just used one A4 sheet of white card to create our, uh, well actually both cards at the moment and all I'm going to do for this is just for my matte layer is really simply, oh, I think this needs re-inking to be honest. Let's just try it in the oxide so I'm just going to turn it over and we just use the Distress Oxide instead. So you don't have to ink up the whole of this panel, literally just the edge. I'm going to glue down this and then we'll add some foam to the back because I do like to foam at least one of my layers and sometimes I find that, uh, come on glue, that it can look a little better if you add foam to your matte and layer and then glue down your background but really to be honest it just all depends on what it is that you've done. So I trimmed this panel originally down to three and a half and it should have been uh, three and three quarters sorry it should have been three and a half inches. So let's try that again. 
let's put that onto our card this let's see the other side I always have a preference just how it's cut sometimes when you know oh that's the back side of the card so there we go there is that I think this is looking really really great so let's pop the lid back on there and should we do thinking of you or should we just do a happy birthday let's do a thinking of you so this is going to stamp the uh, area around obviously it's going to stamp in the black i'm going to grab my stamping platform i'm actually going to pull this strip back out the bin because this is going to work perfectly to fit our sentiment and let's have a go stamping so I could pick up one of the other colours but really I'm quite happy just to do the blue for the moment but because this is Distress Oxide, let's just see how well it stamps. So this is why I've then picked out my stamping platform so I can stamp it again. I'm just going to take some scissors and I'm just going to trim all the way around it. It doesn't look like it's... Uh, a proper square um, a straight side to it sorry well there might be actually yeah, looking at the stamp uh, when you look at it it just looks a little off but I'm going to try and stamp it uh, sorry try and cut it as straight as I can freehand um, so that is our sentiment and I'm actually just gonna put it do I think that's straight <laughs> I don't know I think I've got a wonky eyes and I'm just gonna do that quite simply again let's add a little bit of foam to the back so this card has come together really nicely we'll have to see if the other background is dry because otherwise I might just put that in a separate video possibly it looks a little wonky but never mind and what I think I'm going to do is bring in I might do this purple basil and just bring in just around uh, let's do just a little one there so yeah, just taking that really simple small stamp and creating a background, I actually love this. I love the colour palette as well. Um, and I love the fact that those circles are stamped off centre. That's a really... Um a design that I do really really love actually uh, and yeah I wish there was more stamp sets that did it and you had the stamp there where you could fill it in so you didn't have to do it perfectly I just think it works really nicely so yeah so that is our first finished card using this uh, Wild Meadows uh, set and obviously this is just using the stamp set there and I absolutely love that let's just bring this back in so I think this is still wet for the moment so I don't want to risk anything by maybe like air dry uh, by heating it I'm not sure maybe I'll have a little go uh, but yeah I might just put this in a part two video which will come out directly after this one so you can see how this one's made and then yeah I think this is going to make a really beautiful uh, background there so yeah that's what we've got for today's video so if you don't want to miss out on the next video make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell and it'll notify you when I upload a new video so yeah that's going to be it for this video so thanks very much for watching and happy crafting